What's going on, cryptocurrency universe? It's the Bitcoin miner here, guys. And I hope everybody's doing well. In today's video, we are going to discuss USB power banks. This is a 1500 watt USB power bank with 250 plugs capable of fast charging in all 250 plugs with a battery backup capable of sustaining 1380 watts. It'll run this entire system for about five minutes at full load. And I don't expect to run it at full load. I expect to only run it at about 1,000 watts, maybe 1,100 watts max. Remember, guys, your 80% rule. Always, with electronics, maintain an 80% load uh, of buffer. So if it says it can handle 100 watts, I'll just run 80 watts. Um, it's just much safer and a much better way to design your systems. And you never know when something needs an extra power here or there, an extra watt. Just imagine if all 250 uh, of these plugs needed an extra watt. I mean, that would just blow your system. So you've kind of got to account for these type of things uh, when you're building a system like this. So always stick to that 80% rule of uh, thumb. Now, I will say in the battery backup, I, you know, I am trying to maintain the 80% as well. Uh, but I believe they've got it built into this device. So this device is, and don't quote me on that, this is just an assumption, and that's because it requires a 20 amp plug. So in my garage, what I did is I'm pulling from my garage door opener. Nine times out of 10, a garage door opener has a 20 amp circuit. Go to your circuit breaker box and confirm that, uh, that it is a 20 amp breaker. But that is a 20 amp breaker, so that 20 amp breaker is feeding the battery backup. The max draw on that battery backup is 1675, 1675 watts. A 20 amp a circuit can easily supply, I think, 22, 2400 watts. It's quite a bit. But safely, I would not pull any more than 1900, 1950. So I would say 1900 watts off of a 20 amp 110 circuit is would be my personal limit. And that's about 80%, somewhere right around right there without doing the math. But that leaves me a little more uh, headroom I can pull off of that circuit uh, to power a few other things, which I will consider doing. But with that said, with this being a max uh, supply of 1375 or 1380, and it can draw 1675, I'm wondering if they've already got the 80% built in is where I'm kind of going with this. So just kind of food for thought. You may not need to build that 80% as much with a battery backup. This does require more research. And if you guys know the answer to that, please leave the, uh, the answer in the comments for us and other people. Um, so, yeah, and let's talk about cost and price. I built this whole thing for, I mean, you could build this whole thing for about $1,400. I mean, that's including the 3,500 jewels. Two trip lights, 13 plugs, metered. We'll walk over there, take a look at that. Your power banks and all of this, the power banks and all of that, you can get for about $800. And then the battery backup. You don't even need the battery backup. So if you don't want the battery backup, you could probably get this whole setup for about eight, maybe $850. But compare that to what's available on the market. There's all the best other thing I can find is a trip light, 13 plug, 200 watt. It would take eight of those. It would require eight U in order to run the same setup. I have got the density of this in two U's. And remember, guys, I told you the baseline power load. Remember that. That baseline power load is only 50 watts. I could imagine that running eight of these simultaneous units each unit's going to pull 10 watts as a base load that's 80 watts so you're even reducing the amount of power and it's probably even more than 10 watts but ultimately you are reducing your power load by using a single system like this and that 50 watts is including a battery backup which i'm sure that's drawing 20 of those watts if not more so you know, there is you know a lot of things to consider. This was a little bit of work to put together. I'll put all the links down in the description for the components I used to build this. But if you guys are have any need for a USB battery 
power supply system, I really truly believe this is going to be one of your better options. Uh, and it's modular. If you have a problem with one of the banks, you can just replace it. It's no big deal. They're $25 a piece and everything is set up. Let's go take a look at the other side. So these are the trip light 13 plug and they also have amp meters on this side. So I can kind of watch it as well and then we can watch it in the battery backup guys. So this is our power delivery system for our 125 Orange Pi 5 mining rig supercomputer cluster. We're getting really, really close to getting it done. The server rack has been a nice distraction from <laughs> wire management. This thing has been a serious wire nest. And now it's time, now that the uh, battery backup system and the power delivery system is done, to get this bad boy done and get her up and running. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you hanging out and watching. Remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions about this, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll be glad to have to help you build your own or set it up, but I really, truly believe this is the best option, especially when we're talking density, power consumption, uh, you know, the ability to uh, modular switch out power supplies if you have problems, um, and you have all the surge protection built in, so you're basically getting all the benefits of trip light USB uh, system but in a much cheaper format. Yes, you've kind of got to wire it yourself and put it together, but uh, I'm very impressed with it. I hope you guys like it too. Talk to you guys soon. See you. So what, what is the fee pool and how are fees on the mining network changing? So the way it works, it, there's a 10,000 Varus test fee for launching a PBAS chain. Because it's not, and there's a, a 200 Varus test fee for launching a currency. And because it's non-refundable, as soon as that definition is mined in, then that um, half of that fee is paid out to the blockchain on that definition transaction, okay? Now, the problem, and I'm going to, it's not going to be like your five for a second because this is important. The problem this is solving is that if you leave a 5,000 Varus test fee on a block every once in a while, then miners will eventually figure out, or miners and stakers, that it's really worth it for them to try and reorganize the blockchain so that they get that block after someone else got it. And that is terrible blockchain security okay they have that incentive it's a completely perverse incentive and vitalik actually raised this issue and it's the reason for the ei 1559 that effectively changes the fee model so that they're kind of just throwing away you know fees and they're saying well minor extracted value can't stop that so miners get to you know become almost like no, gray hats at least on the network, and that's just okay. And this this protocol says no. You know, really, um, if the problem is that someone's going to fight to reorg, then why not just take all the fees and put them into a fee pool that persists block after block, and that, and then let the miner take. A percentage of the fee pool after they put all those fees in okay so the way it works is a miner takes all of the fees from a block and they put them in the fee pool and then they take right now on testnet one one hundredth and so um what that does is you have enough incentive to put fees in because one one hundredth doesn't cut like better to take more than less. So you have incentive to put fees in, but you don't get all the fees. And if you miss that block, you have zero incentive to try and reorg the chain to go back and get that block because the next one's almost just as good. And the most incentive anyone has at that point is to just mine forward and converge the chain and the economic activity on the chain that generates these 
bees, because it's valuable economic activity, supports the security of the chain and doesn't fight with it. So that, I know it wasn't like you were five, but did that work? Yeah, so it was an excellent explanation, and I, I, I literally have no holes in the way this system works. I'm pretty sure now that I think that Varus is basically Ethereum 4, but with Monero added on as, as a side grade. And also, it's CPU mineable and ASIC resistant. It, it, Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And I appreciate your comment in the spirit it's meant completely. Thank you.